Okay, Chris Salvador with a review of the pilot for United States of Tara, or Tara, or whatever, T, Tara, Tiara, I don't know. Um, basically, I, I wasn't, I, I kind of knew about the show for a while back, I mean, since it was first announced. Um, written by Diablo, it was a, it was an idea from Steven Spielberg who needs to make October War. Yeah, check out my blog, October War, buddy. It's, when are you going to do it? And then you got uh, Diablo Cody, who I had my, well, you've seen, I'm sure, have, you know, knowledge of the uh, little s scuffle I had with Juno, which, you know, one of my friends just goes nuts at the fact that it's like, how could you not love that as much as I did? And I'm, he goes crazy. So basically, I wasn't going to watch that. I know it's going to air on Showtime, but basically I, I went to YouTube, and it was there, and I thought it was a trailer, and I hit play, and it was the entire episode. So here are my thoughts on basically the the pilot for United States of Tara. Um, when you look at it, it really, the, the first thing that got my attention was that from watching the episode, I was like, this is a Coen Brothers movie without the Coen Brother magic. Yeah, it's like like you see like their sequence in the bowling alley at the end. I'm like, dude, Big Lebowski. The, the, just there's just the it, there's something like the cinematographer. I don't know if he worked with the Coen Brothers, but there's something like every scene, the, even the aesthetic of the way it's shot, feels like this is a Coen Brothers. Like it's No Country for Old Men or something where you're like, oh, like the the, the aesthetic of the cinematography just looks like I'm watching a Coen Brothers movie. Whether you know Fargo or whatever, it's just there's something the way that it's shot feels like okay, it's the seriousness of Cohen. But the great thing about the Cohen brothers is that they're not serious at all. Even in No Country for Old Men, when that's super serious, there's such comedy within that. Not ha ha, not as much as like a Big Lebowski, but there's always a little comedicness that comes out from how zany and crazy and kooky it is, even when it is being serious. So that's what I felt like when I was watching this. I'm like, okay, so this is basically Diablo Cody's. Juno coming into a Coen Brothers movie and taking over and going, okay, let's see what we got. And what we got is something that I I I, I just kept I was I was watching and I was just like I don't I don't think that this can sustain like as as a premise. She has it's you I think it, I know people are gonna say multiple personality syndromes or dissociative, whatever. Basically, she's uh, you know Edward Norton. Uh, from Fight Club, you know, which uh, Tyler Durden, no spoiler there, if you haven't seen Fight Club, you're an idiot, and what the hell have you waited for? It's been on G4 for free for, like, forever, and it's been out. So basically, basically, she's she she's able to be Tyler Durden's, and, or, or in a, in a to, to the, the geeks, heroes, remember Nikki, when she was able to just kind of, you know, Dark Phoenix, and just, you know, that the ability to, you know, one moment you're like this, and then the next you're like, and it's like you just kind of change and you act that it, it, you just change a personality that this is the premise is basically you have a mom who's lived like this and you know depending on whatever personality comes in the family deals with it um not a bad premise to a show a lot of places that it can go i think that the the inherent in, inherent 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 on current inherent problem I'm just gonna say inherent. Fuck it. So basically, the inherent problem is is that basically, I don't believe enough in the premise. I guess is like I just I feel like I wouldn't like if I saw that family from afar, I wouldn't believe that that person was really had a condition. And in a way, it, it's it's like I said, bring it back to Fight Club. Like when you notice, like the way that when you see Fight Club and you see the difference between. You know Edward Norton and uh, Jack, whatever the character is called, Jack and Tyler. That basically the way he saw himself is kind of like a Brad Pitt and different. And in this case, that is a premise that hopefully can be explored because of the, uh, from a visual standpoint, you're just seeing the kind of bare bones. This is the personality that in her mind, I think that there's probably things that would probably work better is that. It's kind of like, I guess it's like seeing Jim Carrey in a series of unfortunate events or Lemony Snicket where he's playing different characters and he, or like Dr. Strangelove or Peter Sellers and there's multiple people 
but the actress is she's not bad. Like I'm not saying Tony Collette's great as it. I think the problem is, is this, like I said, the way that it's filmed. I'm looking at it like a like a Coen Brothers something like where it's like you're not getting the visual sense of like when when she switches a personality. It would be interesting to see what like the, the kind of tone chip a tone. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like usually, like if you're a hunter, what does like? Is, let's say you, your personality is hunter, and you you kill I don't know ducks or some shit. How do you see the world? How do you show to the audience how she's seeing the world that way? Because it's not just a ma like I feel like this is written in a way that's like when you when you, when you see a per like somebody says autistic, and the first thing you do is you just you visually look at autistic person. And you go, oh, that's the way he acts. But you don't get into the minds, the really good autistic performances or whatever, or from whatever condition, uh, multiple personality, someone who's blind, whatever the condition is. It's, it's kind of like the difference if, if, if somebody said, okay, I pretend you're blind right now. And the first thing you kind of do is, you know, you just close your eyes. And you go, okay, that's being blind. Uh, you close your eyes, but it, it's not. Because the person who's been blind, their eyes are always open. And it, that sounds stupid, but it's like no, they're not like, you know, they've mad, they've been built in their life to l not have their hands up for every little thing. That the the way that they've been blind, like something within, like uh, you can't explain, but like they, their hearing is just becomes their eyes, and you don't know how to explain that because you've never had to completely rely on hearing for your life, that it's like, when you see a really good person playing a blind performance, it's not just a matter of closing their eyes and walking around blind, they really understand, like, okay, I wouldn't walk over there, because a blind person would not walk to said spot, because his hearing heard it like 10, you know, like 10 uh, meters away, he was already like, oh, I'm not going to walk down that spot, because, the, and I never go down spots here, and I hear this, and I, oh, I'm getting too far away from this, rain, you know, like, the way that their mind... The, the, a lot of things go into that. That like mostly when you when like I said when you're when you're playing someone blind condition, you just the first thing you think is I just close my eyes, put my hands out, and get a stick. And and usually when people try that, it, there's a funny if you watch Arrested Development, when you see like uh, Tobias or whatever, he's running around trying to be blind, and the first thing you notice is this guy's obviously not blind just because he's you know it's coming on too strong. Like I can't see, and I think a lot of what when a person has a condition, you never know they have the condition. That's the point. Like, like they they're really good at misdirecting you. Or really good actors, or well, not not this is not a good actors, but really good performances of these conditions. The best ones are always the ones that whether it's Forrest Gump or whatever, 